So this video presents a, a brief introduction to a financial market. So the purpose is really only uh, to define some of the elements that we're going to consider when we're talking about the money market and uh, be on the same page when we start uh, uh, talking about monetary policy and such. So uh, shouldn't be too long, but uh, it's worth doing so that uh, this is quite clear. The first thing to emphasize really is that in the financial market that uh, we'll consider uh, in an intermediate macroeconomics course is uh, con has only two assets. In the real world, of course, there are all kinds of assets uh, and uh, with all kinds of different maturities and characteristics. You're all aware of uh, the derivatives market and, and all these things which we will abstract from for our purposes here. So here we have only two assets. One, the, the first asset is money and the second one is a bond or a T-bill, a treasury bill. Now, uh, if we uh, want to briefly characterize them to, to get at the difference between the two, the key difference here is that money does not pay interest whereas the bond pays interest. The bond pays an interest rate. Uh, now, why is that? Well, money is fundamentally liquid uh, and bonds are not. You cannot walk into a store and have a printout of your portfolio with you or even the bond itself and uh, tell the sal salesperson that you'd like to get goods and services for your bond. You cannot buy milk with a bond. So uh, money has a clear advantage. You can use it. Now the bond then pays you uh, an interest rate uh, for you to take the risk of not having the liquidity even though you might need it or you might prefer to have it because you uh, appreciate the certainty and the comfort it comes with the fact of having the cash ready to buy milk or whatever might come in handy. You see already the uh, direction that, that we're going here uh, in times of uncertainty uh, or economic or political distress uh, having money becomes ever more important uh, since you do not know what uh, tomorrow will hold and, and uh, what the uncertainties, uh, what the uncertainty about the future will bring. And so l fixing your money in bonds or other assets that are illiquid carries a certain risk. And the interest rate is compensation for that risk, for giving up the benefits of being liquid. Now, second. Where are we here? Second. Uh, these two assets, money and bonds, add to financial wealth. That's quite straightforward if we argue that there are only these two assets. Mm. But we can furthermore say that money demand, MD, plus bond demand add to wealth and we can still complete that further by saying that well uh, money demand and bond demand add to wealth uh, well then in equilibrium uh, money supply and bond supply will as well add to wealth our first equation here in turn implies that w wealth less money less bonds uh, is equal to zero so these are, uh, in that sense, our equilibrium conditions that uh, in uh, a financial market's equilibrium, total demand for financial assets will be equal to total supply of financial assets and total financial assets add up to total wealth. So we can rewrite this line uh, in still different terms, which will be illustrative namely uh, money demand less money supply must be equal to bond supply less bond demand 
and if that is equal to zero, if these differences are equal to zero, the financial market is in equilibrium. So let me uh, outline this, emphasize this here. Uh, you see that as an equilibrium condition, uh, the money market is in equilibrium when money demand is equal to money supply, so MD minus MS is equal to zero. The bond market is in equilibrium when bond supply is equal to bond demand, so that BS minus BD is equal to zero. But then since M plus B is equal to W, uh, when they're both equal to zero, well then, these, the, this, the difference MD minus MS must be equal to the difference BS minus BD. And we can still further this inside, recognizing what this is. MD minus MS is excess money demand. So if it is equal to zero, there is no excess money demand. If MD, MD minus MS is positive, we have excess money demand. Okay. Now here, if that difference on the left-hand side is positive, well, for this equilibrium condition to hold, then BS minus BD must be positive too. What is BS minus BD? You will note here that, uh, let me highlight this quickly, that these superscripts differ. On the left-hand side, it's MD minus MS, whereas on the right-hand side, it's BS minus BD. Okay. So that means that when excess money demand is positive, we have excess bond supply, not bond demand, but bond supply. No. Excess money demand implies excess bond supply. but if these differences are non-zero, then the financial market is in disequilibrium. We make this space here on the bottom. Okay. So, if excess money demand is equal to zero, then excess bond supply is as well equal to zero, and the financial market is in equilibrium. Which means, and this is the important conclusion we can for all our further discussions focus on one of these assets so looking at excess money demand and specifically what we will do is derive a graph uh, we will look at the money market no i will try to write so that you can read it money the money market, we'll, we will look at the money market and put the money market on a diagram and discussing money demand and money supply, we will always implicitly discuss uh, bond supply and bond demand. Okay, now since we will always discuss uh, implicitly bond demand and bond supply, we need to know uh, what these bonds are about. So, first, the bonds that we'll work with um, are somewhat simplified. It's you know, we're abstracting from uh, different maturities and so on. So we're considering only these T bills that have a one-year maturity. Uh, and within that one year, the bond pays $100. Now, what is then the return on the bond? The return on the bond is, of course, what you get for it in that one year's time, less what you pay for it today, divided by what you pay for it today. So that's the rate of return on the bond, and that is what we'll call I, the interest rate. This formula implies as well uh, a statement for the price of the bond. Namely, if you algebraically solve this out for PB, 
what you get is a hundred dollars divided by one plus the interest rate now, that is leads us to an important conclusion namely that the bond price varies inversely with the interest rate if the interest rate rises the bond price will fall and vice versa so if for example we have pressure on bond prices to fall we can expect the interest rate to rise okay. so this is just a short overview of the financial market uh, characteristics that we'll, we'll be working with going forward